Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to take a break from the budget build series and revisit Mono Blue Tempo uh, now with them. Uh, the M20 cards out. So we got a couple tools there. There was a 5.0 list with the tempo uh, style. Uh, I made a couple of variations just from personal preference. Uh, so we'll try it out in a couple ranked matches, see how it goes. Uh, this is still a very budget conscious deck, which is a, a good tool to kind of come in. Uh, for newer players, it is a little bit more difficult to play. It's not as linear. Um, you are trying to navigate on your opponent's turn and knowing when to sequence stuff. But we'll try it out a couple times. I will probably mess up a couple sequencing, but it's a good learning to revisit the deck. Um, so I'm going to walk you through my variation, and I'll explain the differences from mine to the uh, 5-0 list. Um, so the core of the deck is about playing cheap evasive creatures and trying as much as possible to play on your opponent's turn. Um, the So what we have in the one-drop slot is Pateramander, which can get bigger the longer the game goes on. Uh, Siren Storm Tamer is a wizard and can protect our spells, so uh, our creatures, uh, so it's kind of dual purpose there. We have Spectral Sailor, which is a new card uh, it can flash in, so we can hold up, like say, Spell Piercer Opt, and then drop that in instead. Uh, also, if it's late game, we can use it to draw cards. The engine of the deck is Curious Obsession. Um, so this enchantment gives our creature plus one one, and whenever it deals uh, combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So it keeps us being able to refill our hand with all these cheap threats. It does have the caveat that we do need to attack. Um, and then in terms of dis disruption, we have four spell pierce. Um, with this deck, you can't let Teferi resolve. Um, Baby Teferi is going to stop a lot of our interaction and protection and can balance our creatures. Um, we also have Opt, just as card draw, and to fill our yard. Um, in my list, I'm playing three Brineborn Cutthroat. It's another spell that we can play at the end of step of our opponent's turn, so it gets around uh, sorcery speed stuff. Um, and it rewards us for playing spells on our opponent's turn, so continuing with our theme. We also have Merfolk Trickster, uh, which is a wizard that plays with Wizard's Retort. Uh, it could tap down opponent's creatures, uh, screw up combat math, stuff like that. We have three Charter Course, it's just more card draw. And then we have the Tempest de Jin, which is the top end of our list, um, which is basically the more islands we have, the more powerful it gets. And the Wizard's Retort's a catch-all counter spell. So the main difference between my list and the 5-0 list is I have the Brineborn Cutthroats. The 5-0 list had three Mu Jungling Sky Dancers. I don't like this card. I don't think so. First off, I don't want to tap out on turn three. I don't really want to protect it. It only comes with two toughness. It can't down tick to create an elemental that turn. And like the plus is fine. Like, yeah, if you get the emblem off, you're laughing, but it's going to take a couple turns, and I don't really want to protect that. I want to be about disrupting our opponent's game plan. And if I'm going to be tapping out three mana, I'd rather be playing a Tempest de Jin. Um, so I'm opting to not play them. I also don't want to spend rare wild cards on them right now. I might be wrong, so let me know in the, the comments below if this card is the powerhouse this deck needed. Um, I think Saffron Olive had similar thoughts on the card as well. So the main board is only four rares. Uh, the sideboard, um, I'm opting to play one blink of an eye to deal with a resolve to fairy, or just catch all kind of bounce, three negates, uh, again, to fairy, or just kind of command the dread horde, anything like that. A surge mare versus mono red, narset versus like more of the control decks, uh, kefnet versus more of the heavy removal decks. So there's two mythics there, and then entrancing melodies uh, against more of the creature decks, the steel, wild growth walker, stuff like that. And then I also have four Aether Gusts, which is basically dealing with like Rekindling Phoenix, any of the red or green spells, just kind of tempo stuff to get them out of the way. So I'm going to run it through some games on Ranked. Um, we will see how it plays out. Of course, my uh, thing for the day is not blue related, but let's try it out, see how it goes. What are you guys and girls playing in M20 so far? I've been pretty much jamming Teamer Elementals. It's been pretty good. Um, either wins, it's probably a little bit more inconsistent than I'd like, but overall I've been enjoying it. Um, so we don't have protection with this hand, and we have a few too many lands. Maybe try it. No, let's try it. We'll learn along the way. If 
you are interested in the elementals builds, I just did a budget build series taking from like a starting all common and common version of elementals to teamer elementals. So it's something you could check out. I did a full write up on the arena subreddit highlighting all the details, but you can catch all the videos on the channel as well. Okay, so this is Nexus. So we've probably lost because we don't have a spell pierce. Okay, so it's good to know that we're on Nexus. Narset's good in this matchup. Oh, Jade Light Ranger. Oh, this could be a Teamer Ramp, or a Simic Ramp. So not drawing the best options. Just pass the turn here. We'll flash in the Trickster on combat. Voracious Hydra. When it enters the battlefield, put X11 counters on it. Choose one, double the counters. Oh, that's somewhat terrifying. So here we can trickster the Jade Light Ranger. And then these, because they fight, they'll kill each other. So that's a pretty good play turn for us. So let's chart a course, see what we get. A ton of lands this game. So we have one, so not enough. I like what they did with... Uh, the Adapt, just putting this on here. Nisa. So. I'm just gonna force them to tap down their land here. I think we still need to try to go after the opponent here. I don't think we win the long game. Okay, Curious Obsession is a nice card to have. So I'm going to do this now just to get the blocker out so we can maximize the amount of damage we deal. Way too many lines this game. So we have the protection for the Pateramander. This card seems pretty interesting. Seems pretty good and like these ramp decks. This could be a couple things, Entrancing Melody, Mass Manipulation. So here we're going to sacrifice to counter it. We should have this game wrapped up or at least close to it. Yeah. So we got him there. Um, in this matchup, the Aether Gusts, probably pretty good. Trancing Melodies. Surge Mare is interesting, but I don't know if we want, because I don't really want to pump into it. Uh, putting in Kefnet. Uh, in terms of coming out, 
Don't like the spell pierce as much. I'd probably rather have negates. Like they're going to get to the point where they'll get just tons of ramp going. Uh, I need six cards to cut. Cutthroats seem a little lackluster on the ground. They're going to go bigger than us. Trickster's good. Pteramander's good. Probably just cut the ops. Or probably keep the ops. Get rid of the chart, of course. Played out like that. So like in that matchup, there was never a time we really wanted Mu Zhang, or whatever she's called. So this is just a good test to see at any point if we'd want her. Uh, we will keep this. Having Pateramander. So them not having the elf on turn one was good. They are probably playing crushing canopies. Okay, so here I'm just going to play out a storm tamer. Next turn we can hold up negate and storm tamer. Them having Melody there was good. Okay, so we can Entrancing Melody back our own next turn. Um, just going to pass the turn here. Steal it back next turn. Wanted to do this instead of playing one of these out just to catch if they drop like a Nisa. So they'll take the card draw. So we'll negate that. So let's get the most information possible this turn. Uh, so let's just melody back. Thank you. So really here, if we can get an untap, we're pretty good in terms of not letting them take any of our stuff anymore. Okay, so they have the Hydra. Uh, they got Kefnet. Or we got Kefnet. Just end the turn here. Second Voracious Hydra. So it's going to fight. Okay, they're just going to double the counters on it. So we'll bounce it back to our opponent's hand on end step. Or bounce it on top of their library. So that also takes them off a of land draw for next turn. And 
that's, that's a nice way of improving our clock. Okay, so we drew the land, which is nice. Just end the turn. We can flash this in if need be. We have the Aether Gust. We have the protection. So we got a couple options. So, yeah. Took him down. Oh, tempo dumb. This is a good matchup for us to play. Anything that's like slower mid range, we can usually beat up on. Uh, need some more XP for the free pack. So we'll run it through one more, see how it goes. So, opponent gets to go first. Uh, we'll keep this hand. We are heavy on this Storm Tamer. Ooh, spectral Sailor is nice. This allows us to flash it on end step. Uh, here we just load it up. So it's a little riskier here if they have something like an Omnath, but if they have. Or that's just terrifying. Um, how do we navigate this? So we need to attack. Okay, so I don't know if we can beat this main turn. So I'm doing this for the charter course. Okay, so Dijin's not bad there. Uh, let's just drop a Storm Tamer. All right, so this is Elementals. I'm just gonna pass turn. Next turn we can Obsession it and then have Protection up. Without us having an answer for Risen Reef, it's pretty bad. They're gonna get a ton of value here. Okay, so they're going a little bit more aggro based. Um, loses all its abilities, so that might be a way we can get around it. All right, sweet. That got rid of the egg. Just passed the turn. I think we might be able to recover here. So what happened there was the trickster gets rid of its abilities, so it loses flying and the ability to create a token. We have the storm tamer to protect. They're ramping a lot, but I think we're still okay.
is what happens when you leave them unchecked. No blocks. That improves the clock for us. Spectral. Okay, so we got some nice cards here. I'm going to opt to hang on. The reason being we can double spell Pierce if need be. Spectral Sailor could flash in as another flyer. And we have the protection from Storm Tamer. They need effectively four lands in hand to be able to use this because they got to get rid of this Storm Tamer first. Okay, so that'll come in, that'll check. We will counter this ability. Those will resolve. So if they have a second Omnath, then we're in trouble here. Okay, so they have Phoenix. So them drawing the Phoenix is pretty bad. It could effectively keep blocking and the token does make it trigger the Risen Reefs. Okay, so let's opt here. Want to find a Trickster. That doesn't really help. So we're attacking anyways because we lose the Curious Obsessions if we don't. They will get more value from here. So I think if we don't draw the... Um... You know what? They have the Omnath, they have it. We need to get these out to start. Uh... Okay, so they had the Shock. Interesting they didn't just Shock the Tempest is in there. Seems like the obvious choice. Okay, we're pretty much dead here. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Always get rid of Risen Reeve if you can. Um, so in this matchup, the Aether Gusts are good. Kefnet is another nice card. Entrancing Melody. Um, perhaps Blink of an Eye coming out. Uh, the Spell Pierce don't seem as good. Charter Course don't seem as good. And the ground's going to get blocked up pretty bad. So Risen Reef gets around this. Do we want to negate? Probably not. Maybe just Surge Mare. I could push through. Could also block on the ground pretty well. We'll play first, should give us... We'll try this out. If they have shock, we're in trouble. At the very least here, we get a 
free card draw. Okay, another lion. It's not really what we want. Okay, so they have the lava coil. Can't do much there. Now we're in a pretty bad spot. Um, let's just slow them down a bit. Just pass the turn. In a pinch, we can blink of an eye or Pteromander back. So we're gonna do it with Kicker, so we get the added bonus. Trickster is also nice. So if we draw another mana, we can Entrancing Melody their Phoenix. Zoink. So just waiting to see what they do here. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Second Phoenix. That was a pretty good draw for us. Uh, we can adapt this. I think we just clock them for as much damage as possible here. They can play Risen Reef. Yeah, we got him there. So nice tempo there. Um, we might want the Spell Pierce back if they brought in the removal. Get out the Surge Mare. Probably cut the Opt. Run it like that. Keep the Surge Marin or play Negate. Nah. Yeah, play Surge Mare. This hand. So again, we're a little exposed. Um. I think we hold off a turn. Reason being, they could drop a Phoenix, we can tuck it. I want to have the protection up. <laughs> okay, we lost. 
Um, I don't think we can beat Shifting Ceratops. That clock is scary. We got four turns. We need a Tempest to Jin. We need something on the ground. They didn't attack. That is certainly weird. Oh, it gets reach. Oh, oh, yeah, we lost. <laughs> All right, shifting ceratops, the most OP thing versus mono blue. All right, so that's a couple games of the deck. Um, ceratops definitely seems like an issue. I have to kind of theory craft how to beat it or just concede to it. Um, let me know what you think if Zhao Mu Zhang is something I should be playing. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. Have a great one.